Good morning, everybody. Just France here again this morning. Lovely to see you all. Um, having a bit of a workshop this morning, working with the wires and making some structures without actually using foam. So I thought I'd just get myself a little bit more organised. I've actually put a, a towel down on the table because it can get quite noisy in here. So I thought I'd do that. Um, but yes, like I say, it's lovely to see you all and um, you would have received your workshop uh, sheet yesterday um, So have a look at that. Morning Madhu um, So have a, have a look at that um, and this can be used in many different uh, styles and different ways So I'm just going to incorporate a few little techniques along the way and then show you a couple of options it's one of those, hi more, every more, morning everybody, um, it's a, a really good one that you can just add to and um, just use your imagination and your creativity really. And you'll actually find that some of the techniques I've been showing you, you can actually add in and build into your design, uh, your designs as you go. So, and I'm really loving seeing all the photos coming through from you all. It's been wonderful. Good morning. So what we thought we'd do today, or what I thought I'd do, is I'm going to show you again the technique I, I gave you a quick workshop on the other day. But I thought I'd just show you again quickly for those that never saw it. Um, so I've got some aluminium wire here. Now if you haven't got any aluminium wire, you can use the stub wire, but it's a bit harder on your hands. But when I'm trying to make a garland, I do prefer the, the nice soft aluminium wire. Um, you can use the flat wires as well, flat aluminium, and that'll give you a slightly wider finish. But we're just going to keep it quite simple. Um, and I'm going to use jute, uh, the jute string. Good morning. Lovely to see you all. Um, because in our floral art, and uh, we plant material must dominate, and we use our plant materials. And there's so many different items that you can use. I've got the jute string here. Um, you can use the cotton strings really neat colours, the paper coated wires, the sizals, I've actually got raffia that I've done it with in the past as well, so there's many many options, um, but sometimes I like to use the wool as well, I know I'm not meant to, but I kind of like to use those, and my theory is if the plant material dominates over that, we should be fine. But anyway, so I've got here some jute string and I've got my aluminium wire and I'm just going to have a bit of a strand that I'm going to hang down here just so I can get a grip because it's about getting a grip this design and then I'm just going to bind, it's going to wrap around I should say, just wrap the uh, jute string around and I sort of go up and then I come back down on myself and then I just keep working. And this is a really good one to do when you're in front of the TV. It's really good because you can just be watching and then go, oh goodness, I've finished a whole roll of aluminium. I better go and get some more. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of options. So we're going to just keep binding here at the moment. We're going quite a way down because I want to use this little bit to hook onto the vase. Good morning. And then I'm going to come down and then I'm going to get my test tube and I'm just going to lay it in there. Now I accidentally spilt some glue before but that was just me. It's got no glue on it but then we're going to just wrap that around and incorporate that in. Now go quite firm and quite tight and make sure that you overlap so you're completely covering the tube. Um, you can have a little bit showing at the, at the tip and a little bit at the end but most of it should be completely covered and the idea is this disappears into the design. Good morning Susan. Hi Gillian. So and just keep working around. Um, I wanted to mention, I've got a lot of friends out there, some people are really struggling at the moment. So just know that we're all in this together and, and have a go at these workshops. And um, yeah, it's just quite, it takes your mind off things really and it passes the time, especially something like this. And so I'm wrapping it right around that tube and I'm incorporating it and making sure nothing is showing here. I don't mind a little bit showing here. Um, now, if you haven't got the, poly, uh, the test tubes, you can do the same thing by getting the um, bamboo and cutting the bamboo above a node so it's got that gap and below a node and if you go just below the node that's where the join is that'll be like a little watertight little water container and then you can put the little ones in here and use the bamboo if you haven't got the test tubes so that's another option so look at those so I'm just going to keep and now see how my hands catching and think oh just roll that up out of the way so that you're not going to keep catching your hand then you can just keep binding and then just going to wrap it right round. So today I'm going to do this. We're going to do a technique design today. But tomorrow I keep getting asked, would I show you how to use a batten holder? So tomorrow I'm going to do a real flowery design. 
Um, we're going to see whatever I've got in the garden and I'm going to do a use a batten holder and I can show you tomorrow and explain what they're used for. Um, some of us know, some don't and that's okay. The whole idea of doing these workshops is please just keep emailing me with your questions. It's all about learning so that when we come out of lockdown and you go to your floral art or join a floral art group in some places, you're just going to be so full of knowledge and you're not going to feel out of place. Although they never make you feel out of place anyway. I just love seeing new people joining and sharing what we do. So now my arm's getting a stretching again, so just roll it in and tuck it in out of the way like this. I keep going around, but I'm wanting to expand this. I want to show you... The other day I showed you how to make the little um, leaves, the little petals or, or um, the leaf frames. Well, you could actually do the same thing with this, which looks really quite cool when you actually add them in. So at the moment, I've done my end, I've come in and I've put my tube on. Now I'm making it slightly longer here. Tuck that out of the way, it needs to be just a little bit longer. Come in. Actually, I might make a baby leaf, otherwise I'll be all here all day for you and you'll be getting bored. <laughs> so now I've got this piece here. Fold that, tuck your wire out of the way, get that bit out of the way. Pinch it in half like we did the other day for making the leaf garland I showed you. And get your pliers, pinch it together Squeeze your two wires together, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to leave that up. we're going to wrap it around both wires like this. So I've wrapped it around just at that join. I've pinched it there, and then I'm going to open that up out of the way, and then to tie it into place, I'm going to slide the jute in or the twine in there like that. So now I've only tied that little piece there together, then I'm going to open that up, and now I've got a petal. So I can now keep going. It makes this really interesting when you're doing, you can put as many of these in, in amongst your test tubes. Make sure when you put your tubes, you put them all in up the right way. So the way that you want the flower, I, I always have them all going the one way, so the opening's all that way. Um, otherwise it can be interesting when you go to do your design. Yes, you can twist them to get them to sit up the right, the right way to be able to put the water in, but if you forget, so now I've, done my end, I've got a test tube, I've got a petal. Now what else can I put on here? I want to make it as interesting as possible. So I'm going to keep going. Tuck that in. Keep going around and around. It's really good. This way I get to talk to you. Hi! <laughs> so now I'm thinking, mm, it's becoming a bit flat. We want to add a little bit of textual contrast to it, so we're going to give it a little bit of, we're going to bind back over it a couple of times. So just wind it back over itself and slowly build that up. So see how I'm going round and round? Building that up. Go okay, back over and over itself. This is what's going to give it interest rather than it all being just one, one thickness. So see how now we've got the end, got the tube, got a petal, got a little bit of contrast here. And I'll just hold that out of the way and then I'm going to carry on down. Now, I'm not going to do this whole thing because, you know, I just wanted to show you options so you can add in. So what I'm just going to do now is I'm just going to cut that, I'm going to cut that and I'll show you what else I've made. And then I can do the design. So now I'm just going to loop it and tie it off, slide it down, loop it and tie it off. Now I would make sure that all this wire was completely covered. I want to make it so that we've got that rhythm of colour coming through. So now you've got quite a neat little piece that you can pop in your design. And with the little petal that I've got here, the little leaf, you can do all sorts of things with this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of cold glue on the back of it. A bit of cold glue. The reason why I'm using the cold glue is because it won't burn the leaf. If you're using a skeletonized leaf, it really doesn't matter what glue that you've got, so long as it's a quick drying glue. And then I've got some magnolia leaves here that I picked off the tree. This is little gem. I like the little gem. It's not as tough as the grandiflora, which is the really big magnolia leaf. Um, so this is the little gem, and it's nice and pliable. And then I'm going to just cut a bit of that off a little bit. It's a bit big. And then I'm going to lay it. Which way do I want it to go? Maybe I'll do the copper. Do you want the back, the back to show? And then just lay it on the frame like so. 
over the top of the glue. You wait a minute, have a talk. Maybe go make a coffee. Hello in Ireland. Love to see you in Ireland and those in the States and those around New Zealand and Australia. And then when it's dry, then again, just cut around the outside of your petal that you've made. Make sure it's set properly. And now you've got kind of a cool little leaf that you can add um, add into your design. So it just looks like it makes it quite interesting. Now we're going to be doing this. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to use a vase to get this to stay on a vase. But if you just wanted to do like a little miniature design, you can actually just have these like this on the table. I'll just cut that little piece off there to make it right. Um, manipulate the leaf so it isn't sitting in a two-dimensional shape you want to make it a bit more give it a bit of movement so hold it when you bend it and you can bend it to make a little leaf shape like so put that around and then with a bit of luck fingers crossed that should stand up on the table so it makes a neat little workshop I'll just see if I can get that to stand up on the table like so so you can make a whole lot of these little tubes and then what we'll do is we'll just fill this one up with a little bit of water and then see what flowers you've got. I've got over here, I went and I picked um, I picked some camellias that are just starting to come out in the garden. I've got a nice little camellia here, we've got a whole hedge row of these ones. And then just pop that in your little container and it makes like a neat little specimen vase. So I thought that was kind of cool. And I, hello in Dublin and Ireland. Hello to those in America, hello in Orkney. But you can see that would make quite a neat little design and you can just add to it and do all sorts of colours and it's a neat little workshop. So good for new people that are starting off. So I'll just put that there and I'll bring over my big turn table here. So I've got my big turn table. I hope you can see that design okay. I'll move it over just a fraction. Uh, so then I thought, right, well you don't want to watch me make a whole big garland. I'll probably bore you to tears. So... I've made the garland that I made the other day. This is quite a big one. Uh, and then all I'm going to do is the beauty about using glass containers is it's transparency. So you can see inside it. And then what you can do is you can have flowers floating on the inside in your little tubes and have flowers around the outside of your container. So what I've done here is it's just a big long garland. I've squished some so that it goes on the inside. I've got a little bit of a mind of its own here. Just clamp it around the outside of your vase like so. You might want to hook that one in there if you think that's so. Just put that one there and just have a bit of a fiddle with it so that you're happy. Let it clamp around the outside of your vase. Squish it. It's nice and squishy. And I've made just another bit of a garland here that I'm just going to put over the top as well just to clamp that on. And again, I'm going to tie that and lock some of these into place so it really holds that firm into my vase onto my vase because it's not and then I've just got a couple of tubes I'm going to stand up inside I'm going to have one just slightly higher than the other like so have a fiddle just make sure you're happy with it so that's the look there just a fun way of doing a little design um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill these up with water and this is really neat you know how like you get those little specialty flowers and you just want to show them off you haven't got enough to make a design, but you want to do a little bit of a design. And you can use this on any vase that you've got. It could be a very tall container, to a little low dish, to um, a rectangle vase, cubes. Um, great one to do for as a club workshop, actually, because then you can end up with some really cool ones. You can do them right along the table centerpiece. Um, have a big long table and have just all of these just moving along these different vases that you've got. So it looks kind of cool. So now I'm going to put in here some more of these gorgeous little, I love this. I've forgotten the name of this camellia. Oh, I should know it. My friend, um, she gave us a whole lot of hedging plants to put in the garden. And that one there looks like something's been added, so we better get rid of the debris. Pop another one around the outside. Nice and fresh, touch of lime green, a little bit of white. Looks like eggs, doesn't it? <laughs> right, and then put a few more in here. The big thing is when you're doing a design like this, don't incorporate too many techniques because you actually want to show the flowers off. So then that means also don't go and add so much that you can't see the work that you've done. 
a little one in there like that and I've got a, left a few of the little leaves on and a few of the buds I put another one in here around the edge of the vase like that don't have them all facing the same way either have some turning one way some turning the other way it takes your eye in and out and gives it interest but that's giving it a nice bit of rhythm if I turn that around so that you can see the rhythm and I can see the textural contrast because the actual sizal is quite rough and quite textured. And then I've got the shiny leaves of the little camellia here and then that lovely um, camellia showing off. And what I'm going to do is put a little bud in the middle. Bud just in there and taking my eye down a little bit. I might take that leaf off as well. I love the little buds on here. The new ones coming through. Let's tuck that down nice and low so it's giving a bit of depth into that design. Turn it around, and then if you want to, you could always add, I'm not sure if I want to use these, maybe I will, yes, I think I need that little bit of green, but don't have it so it's sitting flat, so I'm using some baby philodendron xanadus, these are the little ones, put one there, might put another little one in through here, just to give it a little bit, do I want two or do I want just one, mm, I don't know, I'll put it and see if I like it. Take it down a bit lower though, that gives it a bit of depth. And then I was out in the garden, we've just had that really big, big storm that I was telling you about the other day, um, yesterday, and the little liquid amber pods have come off the tree, and I thought, oh, so what I'm going to do here, so you can either cold glue them on, or I'm going to use the little U-glue dashes, so I'm going to stick one of them delicately, delicately on there, and you should be able to peel that back off. Peel it off. And then I'm just going to stick a few of these just to give it a little bit more. Just a couple, not too many. Gives another form to come through. Just pop a few more in here. They take a little bit. A bit tricky to get off, so you've just got to be with me. And I think I might put one just down on the bottom there of the vase. And I might put another one down on the other end over here. And just two through the middle. That's all I want to do. If I can find the end, put another bit more in here, another one right down in here, well, I put, actually I might put one right on the inside of the vase this time, stick that on, and through there, and I think that might be enough actually, do I want three, oh no, I might put one more in here, you don't know until you start looking, don't be afraid to keep adding, but also don't be afraid to take it away if it doesn't look right, so I put another one of these on here, I can find the end. Another one, I'm going to put that one right down there. That's better. So that's showing you how you can just get a grip. <laughs> it's all about getting a grip. So that's one. Um, if you want to have a little practice with the different techniques, have a go at this little one here. I thought that was kind of cute. So you can just do a couple of little leaves. So have a play. Do have a go and send me some photos. And then I had this little play here with using different colours of the wool. And just showing how I've got one on the inside of this rectangle vase. I've got one right on the inside. And because yellow is very, very luminous and so is white, it actually takes your eye into the design. Um, but to give it just a little bit of rhythm, um, we've already got like rhythm happening by using this here, but just sort of give a nice soft rhythm. I've just used a couple of pieces of the formium. This is formium cookianum duet. And you just tear it like this. I'm just going to put my finger through and tear it. This looks, by the way, really nice when it's dried and shredded and you put it on the outside of your tubes. So that's just, um, and then I've just popped a little bit of rhythm to come in through here into my design putting it in the tube and then taking it over and putting one inside. And what that'll do is it'll feed your eye down inside the container. So I hope you enjoyed today's little workshop. And as you can see, there's so many possibilities. It's lovely to see you all. Keep those questions coming. If I can help, I will answer. And also um, keep those photos coming. I'm really loving your design work that you're doing. Um, and there's absolutely no rules. I'm not critiquing. I'm not judging them. I just want you to do flowers purely for the fun of doing flowers. And um, I like sharing them on my page. The so people can actually see what you've been doing um, and show people who you are so we can get to know each other. So have a wonderful day, and tomorrow I'll be setting up and doing the um, showing you how to use a baton holder, and I'll put the uh, requirements up again with a little workshop sheet and pop that on my 
on my page um, but also have a look at some of the other groups than the Friends of Nefes page have a look at the um, Floral Arts Society of New Zealand the Australians page uh, and all the different societies around the world and get to know each other and maybe when this is all over we can have so much fun together so have a wonderful day everybody I'm going to go and help Ash finish cleaning this other water tank that's my job today so take care have fun and go and have a coffee <laughs> bye bye